You're no stranger to troubled Hardman roles, but yeah. looking back, was this one of your toughest? Yeah, I think so. Um, probably didn't realise it at the time. It's when you finish making a film like that. And then I made a film called Warzone after. And it's about uh, abuse, you know? I'm playing a paedophile. And I, I kind of wondered why I got upset by making a film like Warzone. And then I had to think about Neil by Mouth, where I'd go home at night and I was all right, you know? So it's kind of like therapy, in a way, you know? So you, you, it, was, it, it wasn't difficult mentally for me to make Neil by Mouth. Physically, yeah, it was tough. It was tough, but that was part of the fun. It was much more difficult for me to make Warzone, you know, because that was mentally, you're playing someone you detest. Now, why would you detest that man more than you detest the man in Nilbo Mouth? Mm -hmm. So, I kind of make, makes you think about it and it hopefully makes you a better person, you know? And I was watching an interview with Gary Oldman back in 97, talking about the film, and that, he, you know, he w this wasn't a directing for the sake of it, as an actor moving to di directing for the sake of it, but he had a compulsion to tell this story, and he was sort of fed up with the trends he'd seen you know, in film, and, and he felt like he wanted to make something, you know, authentic, without sentimentality, about the lives people are living at that time in South London. Did that really come across when you're working with him? Absolutely. I don't think anyone else could have made it. Not like that, not as good as that. Um, I'm going to be a bit unkind to other directors now, but I, th I think he was the best director for me that I've ever worked with, bar none. And I've worked with some good ones. And of course, working alongside Cathy and, and Charlie, what was your experience working with them? And, and oh, it must have been very intense on set. You know, he took his time with the casting and finding the right people, um, and he found them right. You know, I mean, Stephen Sweeney, you know, was. Fantastic, um, Charlie is it amazing. Anyway, and Kathy, and then go on all the way through the cast. They all setting it right, you know. And it, I think we were all on the same page. And that, uh, in a way, that went back to the rehearsal time. We we rehearsed it. We rehearsed it like we were going to do a play, I guess. But at the same time, he was messing around with a camera around us, you know, crossing the line, you know, and coming in from the side and getting really close. And so he was prepared for his shots, which I guess directors need to do anyway, but to do that with the cast, the cast then knew what he wanted from his shots. That very rarely happens. I've, I've very rarely come across that anyway when I've been filming, so I learnt a lot just in the rehearsals before we even went and made the film. And I was reading one reaction to the film saying, uh, you know, a guy also grown up with a violent alcoholic father yeah. and he felt like he watched this film and it was like Gary Oldman saying to him, look, I lived through it too, and he found it very healing. Do you think that's, there's something in that, the power of cinema well, to do that? Well, I, I didn't hear that, but um, if that's the case, it's fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. You know, because if that actually helps someone, then the film's done its, done its job in a way, hasn't it? Okay. It's not, I mean, it's not Saturday night with a pizza, is it? <laughs> I'll probably come out a bit like that, shaking like a leaf. And my, my daughter tonight is watching it for the first time. She's never seen it. She's, she's 21, but she's never seen the film. So God knows what her reaction is going to be tonight, you know. So we'll see. We'll probably all be a bundle of nerves going home in the car. <laughs> she won't talk to me for three weeks. Yeah. Well, that's going to be our next question. I mean, it's getting a new lease of life, isn't it? So, you know, how do you think that period can, can speak to today and, and perhaps remain very relevant? I think it is relevant. It's, it's, really, it's timeless, really, that. I'll be interested to see it tonight because I haven't seen the film for, well, since it first came out. So, and to see it on a big screen after 25 years, um, to see if it holds its own. You know, the style, you know, is different today. Um, so, it'd be really interesting to see if that film holds up tonight. I'm sure it will, you know. And just tell us, you know, what you've got to look forward to in the future. How do you pick your roles now? And have you got any itches left to scratch in well, terms of directors, I subjects? I don't pick me roles. They kind of pick me. <laughs> you know, I'm getting on a bit. Uh, if I'm lucky enough, you know, every now and then something nice will come along. And if not, you know, we go and have a look what's around. But, you know, why I can walk and why I can still talk, I should carry on grafting. It's what we have to do. We have to pay our tax, don't we? <laughs> mm. 
I think it's probably special today because of uh, Gary Oldman telling the story. The writing was very good. If I remember rightly, we didn't change much work. We, we improvised a bit, but it was written, you know? Um, and it's a very honest story. You know, it's about life now. It's no different now than what it was then and before then, you know? So, and I think it's, I think it's the honesty that makes it quite a, quite a special film, you know? I think he's intelligent. He's a very intelligent boy. Um, I think where that shows is, uh, you know, we, we made films, we, we both worked with Alan Clark years and years ago. And I think um, Gary going to America and, and seeing the way you make kitchen sink dramas, but you, why can't you make them anamorphically? Why can't you make them cinematic? And I think what he'd done with um, Neil Bowmouth, I think he'd done that. I think he managed to bring a documentary type real life film, you know, with a great script, but he made it cinematic, you know? Uh, it takes a lot of intelligence to do that and to understand the film, you know? Well, I'd, I don't know where it's important to have that in it. Um, that's just the way I come at it. I come at it from a real point of view, you know. You don't always get that right, you know. Sometimes it's like uh, I was doing. The, I was doing one particular scene in the film, and uh, and Gary said to me, Raymond, I, I could see you acting. <laughs> and I think that's that's the kind of that's what we were looking for in the film. This thing of not seeing someone act, you know, just be. You're being them people, you know, you're talking. In fact, the words were so good, you really didn't have to do too much. That's uh, it's a really good question because I think when you, I, I became an actor by mistake, not mistake, but by accident, really, you know. Um, I got expelled from, a, uh, from college, and if I hadn't got expelled from college, I wouldn't have been an actor. So that, all that came very new to me. I never became an actor because I necessarily wanted to be a storyteller. I think that kind of came later, and I, when I found out that I, really what I like doing is making films about social issues. I make other films, doesn't necessarily mean I like having to do those or make those. I'm much happier in this kind of genre of telling stories about people today or in the past or maybe in the future, but it has some relevance to the social issues we have to deal with every day of our lives, you know? Yeah, of course, um, working with Tim Roth on Warzone. Mm -hmm. um, another really good actor, great actor, who's, who turned out to be a great director for me, you know? Uh, uh, also, Jawbone, something that was very close to my heart anyway, uh, boxing, but also the social issues that came with that, and that surrounded that. Sexy Beast, you know, telling it in a different way, almost like with Shakespearean, you was, like, you was talking. If you missed the word out in the script of Sexy Beast, it threw it all over the place, it became something else, you know? So it, there's, there's films that I'm really proud that I made and I feel very lucky to be part of them, you know? So, and I could go on. There's some other ones which <laughs> yeah. I go, well, you know, I didn't get that right. <laughs> and really, I shouldn't have been in it, but that's shit happens. <laughs> it was that was totally different for me. I mean, it's kind of um, you know when you sit down, what your vision is to somebody else's vision are totally different, you know. And I kind of thought I was making an old-fashioned fairy story. <laughs> it didn't turn out that way, but it was so good for me because I learned on it. We're making a different sort of film, you know, and work with some really lovely people. I mean, the director and it was was terrific, I loved him, you know. And the cast were, I've got Angela Bassett as my wife, you know, I mean, what more do you want? So, you know, it was, it was fabulous. It was, and we were filming in Portugal. Fantastic, what more do you want? And, uh, I haven't seen the film for maybe, maybe 24 years. You know, I saw it on the big screen 25 years ago, so. Um, I don't really think I knew what we had at the time. If I think back, to be honest about it, um, it changed my life as an actor with the, with the parts that I got after. Um, what, what the film gave to me, I think, was working with someone like Gary. Um, 
not only from the writing point of, point of view, but um, from the director's point of view, was to give me the confidence to be to act how I wanted to act, you know, and to have that support from the director is. Uh, Oh, maybe I'm being a bit unfair, but it's very far in between, you know. And at that age, I was around about 39, 40 when I came to do the film, so I guess I needed that confidence, I needed that kind of man behind me to back me up a little bit, you know, and allow me to go and probably act how I thought acting should be, you know. So it changed my life a little bit. <coughs> it did for a while, yeah. Um, and I was quite lucky that I'd I've done a bit of stuff before, you know, so um, not everything works out the way you plan it to, you know, so some of the stuff. It's a, it's a very difficult film to follow, Neil by Mouth, you know, because it was the kind of genre that I liked, you know, it was about social problems, it was about life as I knew it. Um, and so to go and do a different film where you're, you have to adapt and uh, maybe act a little bit more. Um, I found that quite difficult, but then you learn that pretty quickly. If you don't, you don't survive. You know? Yeah, it was. It, was, it, was, it wasn't uh, personal. You know, everything that happens in the film wasn't personal, Gary. But we kind of, we've, he'd seen, and I, I certainly seen that side of life. Um, so there was an understanding, I guess, and, and I, I, hopefully, I'll, I'll see tonight if the film holds up today. You know. Um, you can clean it up all you like, and you can put new sound on it and all that, but um, whether the story stands up, I'll be, I'm very interested to see if that, that occurs. Yeah, well, it, it, it did. I said a certain word so many times in it, but I think Ben Kingsley beat me in the end with, with, in Sexy Beast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the language. Yeah, it's the words. I, I guess it's like Lenny Bruce said years ago you say a word enough and it becomes nothing. It's just part of the language. They're still here. Um, they've always been there. You know, um, they're a reflection of life, and it's not necessarily just in the working classes. It's in any class. You know, I mean, it's a funny word, isn't it? Working class. Uh, the people that are kind of written about don't work. You know, it's a kind of underbelly of society. You know, you know? Um, and I, I, I guess the thing is, you you, you want to really look why that's the situation, why people are like that. It's a lack of education, is it a lack of funds? People that are driven to desperate means when they need to be, you know, you've got to feed your family. Well, cost of living crisis, though. I mean, that's the kind of thing we're all thinking about right now, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. It's always been there, isn't it? Yeah. Don't matter who runs the government, it's always there. Yeah, I didn't get the work with Rust. Um, we miss one another on it. Um, we have a we have a little chat every now and then. He's a good boy, you know. Um, then I done. I was doing Damsel out in um, Portugal, a lovely area. It's great because Portugal, you know, usually kids like us we only know about the Algarve and places like that. But it's funny when you work on a film, you go to places where the tourists don't necessarily go, you know. In the middle of Portugal, you go to the wine region and you go, wow, oh, dear me, I didn't know Portugal was like this. You know, it's, we're very lucky people. You are lucky. Where, where, before I just pass you over, where would you put in your <coughs> mouth as in one of your best ever roles with your favourite roles? I, I, I think so, yeah, yeah. I mean, films like Sexy Beast Wars, um, Proposition, Jawbone. I mean, I've been lucky to do some stuff that I've, I love doing, you know, and, and the subject matter. I love the subject matter. Uh, it's, you're not always lucky enough to get those jobs, so, and that's where you, uh, where you have to show what you can do, you know. No, even the side, the trousers are a bit tight tonight. <laughs> I had to get this one, I ain't worn it for three years. But it's all in me together. Looking good. Oh, Looking bless you. Good, Thank, you Thank you very so much. much for your time.